so Makanko just receives some brand new support. And by new support, I mean one brand new trap card, and that was all. And that was all. Honestly, this video is probably going to be a pretty short one, considering it's only one brand new card, and it's not exactly the most impactful card at that. In fact, I don't think I even really needed it necessarily in any of the replays I'm going to show you today. But since I quite like the art type and I just want another excuse to upload a video about it, I went ahead and made this video anyway, so without further ado, let's go check it out. So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before I get to the deck list, if you guys are enjoying today's video and want to see some more content just like this in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer, so apparently about 35% of you watching this are even subscribed to the channel, meaning 65% of you haven't even subscribed yet. So you guys are enjoying this kind of content, want to see some more deck lists me in the future, or more videos from me in the future, please remember to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel down below. Alright, let's jump into this list. Alright, so like I mentioned earlier, there's probably not going to be a whole lot for me to talk about really since it's only one brand new trap card, and the rest of the deck list is all just cards you've probably seen before. It's a very stock standard looking Makanko list, with maybe a little bit more leniency to going heavily going second, since I'm not playing the blue Makanko and I'm only playing one of the trap cards, but the actual cards themselves, you've definitely all seen them before. Maybe you're not used to seeing Nadir Servant in Makanko, but it's a really good card going second. I'm playing the Interruption, or Interrupted the Kaiju Slumber, which is again, another good card going second. It's like a Raigeki, except it gives your opponent a monster, so it's really good for Makanko since you wipe the field and still lead them with a monster. We've of course got Trip of Your Thrust to grab all these one-off spell cards, which is why they're all one-offs. And every Everything else you've definitely seen before. Like we've got the equipped spells that are basically needed for the art type, you've got your triple lava golem which is holy shit this card is good in the meta, you're gonna see this a lot in the replays. This actually farms snake eye, I love this card. And of course got a couple of kaijus as well because they've kind of required. And that's basically it for the weird sort of cards in here. But let's talk about the, well what well, the star of the video, the brand new card, the trap card, Makanko Spirit Walk. Target one face-up monster your opponent controls, equip that face-up monster to one Makanko monster you control as an equip spell. Then if a ritual monster is on the field, you can inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each equip spell you control. You banish this card from your graveyard, spit on some Makanko monster that is banished or in your hand. This card is really good. Now the reason I like this card a lot, although it's not super impactful in the art type because most of the time you're killing your opponent going second anyway, the reason I like this card so much is I was one of the few people in Makanko that was cutting the other trap card completely. I couldn't stand playing it. It's a card that felt like you need to have considering you're always going to be searching off your Makanko jewel every single time, your Hilu or have you pronounce this card, Huli. I really should learn the names of these cards. But this thing basically always gets a search every single game. But searching for that other trap card just felt so pointless. The trap card that equips slants your opponent just felt so weak. I just did not like it at all. It didn't help this deck's game plan of just killing your opponent. Because that's all you want to do. You want to go second. OTK your opponent on that turn, and this trap card actually kind of helps that, considering once the turn passes back, you just equip, take one of your opponent's monsters, equip it to yourself, and nuke your opponent for like 1500 to 2000 damage or something. So it actually helps the deck's game plan, doesn't just give you some follow-up trap card which, most of the time, one lot of disruption isn't actually going to stop your opponent, so there isn't really a whole lot of point in playing the other trap card. I like this card way more, so it feels like we actually have a good search off your Huli now, which is good. But, like I said, it's not that impactful for the art type considering most of the time you've probably killed your opponent before it passes back to them, or you've probably struggled to win the game anyway. So, not the most impactful card, but did give me an excuse to make another Makanko video. So, without further ado, let's go check out some replays, which, by the way, there were some banger replays today, so let's go check them out. Alright, so they've got six replays to share with you guys, some of which are absolute bangers, some of which are fairly mediocre, and some of which I just recorded because they were kind of funny, so I saved them anyway, but just a fair warning, the trap card, it doesn't really feature all that much in these replays because the card itself doesn't really feature all that much in Makanko, it's just kind of there because you're going to search for a trap card, you might as well play something that can sometimes help you. That's basically all the trap cards are there for, so don't think these replays are going to be super exciting or showing off the trap card. It's more just showing off Makanko as an art type as a, as a whole anyway, so let's check them out. 
All right, so you can see I started at Diamond 3, ended at Diamond 1. This deck is easily a Master Tier deck list. I think I'm like two games off of being Master Tier with a deck list anyway. And I reached Master with a very similar deck list to this like a couple of months ago anyway. It's definitely a meta, oh sorry, not meta, a Master Tier sort of deck list. Maybe not meta tier, but it's still a pretty good art type. All right, let's check it out. It's definitely not something you'd want to play in like a best of three tournament setting, but on ladder when most people let you go second anyway. And of course, it's pretty good into max C. It could be very good on the map, on the um, ladder anyway. All right, so I'm against Sprite. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't use this back C, I'm, we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to keep going. <laughs> I, bit of a mistake on my part, all right? We, I kind of forgot how Sprite worked. It's been a while since I played against them. But it's fine. We just get to use it here. Didn't matter anyway. I think he had an Ash Blossom. Spoiler alert. And he did. Alright. Maxi does feel a little bit weird in Makanko though, especially against things like Cash Terra. Because you don't want to use the you don't want to use the back C and then have your opponent pass a turn without summoning a monster. Because then it becomes really hard to kill them with the Makanko. So you kinda want them if they're playing Cash Terra, you don't want to just activate Maxi immediately in case they just pass. Sometimes they'll still summon the Fenrir, because Fenrir, of course, is still one lot of disruption, so sometimes they'll summon it. But if they pass turn, it feels really bad, so... I like to hold the Max C until I can guarantee my opponent's going to put something on the board or commit something to the field. So, yeah. I definitely should have used it as soon as I saw the first Sprite monster, though. I just kind of forgot how Sprite works, and they just keep summoning themselves. Alright. I don't know what field this guy set up, by the way. I did not expect this. It was really weird. Is it not like a pearly beauty? I d this is the weirdest looking sprite end field. It's like two lots of disruption, sort of three. And he's got the one dude in the graveyard he plans to revive. It's very weak to like imperm, right? I, I don't know. It's an odd field. I think you can definitely set up better sprite fields than this. But anyway, sending my card to the graveyard with my Nadir Servant, searching for my Maximus, and be popping the back row on the field. A torrential tribute of all things. Searching for my. Um, a water, activating the water, targeting this, this way we can try to remove two lots of disruption at once here. Opponent's immediately going to summon out his monster negate in response, doesn't really change anything here. But he is going to pop my card on the field, that's both disruptions gone. Alright, searching for another water, because he didn't wait for me to activate it. Uh, this is our slot you should definitely learn if you're playing against Makanko ever. Wait for them to actually use the water first before destroying it, otherwise they're just going to reactivate it. Because it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a once per turn, but it's not like once per turn to equip it to something, so... Wait for them to actually use the card before destroying it. So as you're destroying an equip spell, will like, negate it, so... Alright, removing his monster negate, searching for my trap card, because I can. Alright, banishing, sending, reviving the fire. Don't have to worry about Fenrir as he's a um, targeting effect, so don't care. Going to battle phase, swinging in. Returning to hand, swinging in. Then summoning out. And even if we didn't have lethal here, even if he had a little bit more life points because he didn't use that sprite search spell or whatever else, we would have had the trap card ready to steal slant during his turn and inflict whatever, whatever amount of damage that is, like 2,000 damage to him, so he was very dead, and that's sort of the, that's the good thing about the trap card. You can search it guaranteed every single game, and it gives you that extra bit of damage just in case your opponent survives. In case your opponent, like, interrupted one of your, uh, Makanko summons, and you were just one little bit of damage short of lethal, now you're definitely going to kill them. It's actually quite important when it comes to things like the Kaijus and stuff, because a lot of time you do Kaiju your opponent and they have 3,000 attack on field, you swing with two Makankos, that's 6,000 damage, they're 2,000 damage off being killed, and that trap card does generally reach 2,000 a lot of the time, so... Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good trap card, just isn't that impactful, because most of the time you're killing them anyway. Alright. Up against Rescue Ace, alright. So this one... I may have recorded this replay just because I thought it was pretty funny. So, there's a couple of things about Rescue Ace to note when you're playing Makanko. I don't think their deck has a non-target removal source. I think every bit of disruption they use is target. The Prometheans target, both their trap cards are target. Uh, 
I, I forget what else they have. <laughs> IP Masquerader into Unicorn, I guess. <laughs> it's just also a targeting effect. I don't know. They, they, their entire deck is targeting. So if you get the the uh, Hulia on the field, I don't think they can even deal with it very often. Maybe I'm missing something in the art time. Preventer is a targeting effect. It is, it a lot, even this guy's a targeting effect. So it's one of those weird matchups where, oh, you can just sort of summon one, uh, one Hooli and they have a lot of trouble dealing with it. But that wasn't even what happened in this game. That was just something that happened um, in some of the other matches I played. This one I saved because, yeah, we have a triple tactics thrust, and this guy has a lot of back row. Oh dear, he seems to be going for a heat soul route. That would be a that'd be a very bad play to make against a deck that plays triple tactics thrust. All right, so he's gonna turn this into his link one. Oh god, he's even reducing his own life points. He was just making it easy for me. Out comes the Heat Soul. Mine is a thousand. Even more back row! Set 5, wow. What could possibly happen to a set 5 back row? With a triple tactics thrust. Oh, there's a back seat. Good on him. Alright, add to the thrust. I think it's like I really like... Uh, I, stuff I like about this deck a lot is it's one of the decks where you don't get tilted when you see your opponent activate max C, and you don't get tilted when the coin toss lands second, which is like the two most most tilting things in Master Duel you don't get from this deck list, because you don't care about max C, you're only summoning like twice and your opponent's dead by then. And yeah, if you, get, get, if you roll the coin toss going second, you're happy about it. <laughs> There's the Feather Duster, and bye bye five lots of back row. I'm not a turbulence too. He probably could have like a preventer there or something. At least have one lot of disruption. I don't know why you would summon this. Anyway, hidden armory, gonna be searching. And he concedes. Alright. On to our next one. Not sure that replay was particularly a uh, very Makanko. It was more just a Lamau. I just activated thrust, but I thought it was pretty entertaining anyway. Alright, so the replays that were the most entertaining in these were definitely the Snake Eye ones, where my opponent set up a full Snake Eye field, and this completely shit on them. And I don't know if this was one of them. Activate Maxi. I don't think Maxi resolved once in any of my games today. I played quite a few games too, however many games it takes from Diamond 3 to like two games off Diamond 2. I don't think Maxi resolved once. Still think you should probably be playing Maxi though, as at worst it's like a bait out for things like um, Ash Blossom and Cold Boy. Which are both kind of annoying when you're playing Makanko. You do summon from a graveyard and you do uh, you do actually hate Ash Blossom a lot. Alright, opponent's doing some cash tier stuff, but as per usual, it's not actually cash tier, it's just uh, Snake Eyes in disguise. And this guy's playing the Synchro variant. So Synchro variant, very well known for setting up negates. And we have a nice looking Lava Golem here. Oh, this oh, this is the Bayer gameplay, I think. I think? I think this is the gameplay where... Yeah, yeah you, you'll see it, you'll see it. This was actually kind of funny. So Snake Eyes has this weird, like... They're, the, they're one of the only decks that actually care if you use Maxi on your t on, on, like, my turn. Because, obviously, they special summon a shit ton during your turn. So they don't actually like you resolving Maxi. Which was very good for me. Alright, summons out his Ahi Mascarena. Sends these two away, summons his dude to the field. Alright, grabs his two monsters, puts them on the field. Summons out a Formula Synchron. Gets his card draw. And eventually he'll finish his turn here. Surely. Surely he'll finish his turn at some point here. Alright, fast forwarding, come on, hurry it up. Alright, and then he passes his turn. Alright, so you'll notice with my hand, I need my opponent to use a monster effect badly. He's got two monsters here where he wants to special summon. So I'm like, huh, what if I just activate Max C? Let's see if he responds. And of course, activate Max C triggers Ash Blossom because he doesn't want me to draw 15 cards from all his special summons, and absolutely opens the floodgates. He summons everything. Oh yes, I like what they summon preemptively when I've got a nice lava golem here and some some thrusts and some tactics. Oh god, he really was using everything. I 
fast forward a little bit. Even summons out a Baron as well. So he's just he's just summoned his entire field. Gets rid of a heater for some reason. I don't know why. And I think he lays out every bit of every, every bit of disruption the deck has. There's no Promethean in graveyard, so <laughs> instant lava golem with his two disruptions. Talent's just gonna be drawing some cards. Hitting another lava golem. Thrust, searching for uh, preparation of rights. I could have probably also used the um, uh, whatever it's called. Oh, I forgot the name of the card. The card that recently got limited that sends stuff from the extra deck to the graveyard. I could have used that spell card to then just search for a ritual spell that way. Probably would have been oh, a ritual monster that way. Probably technically better, but I don't know. I just searched for this one here. I think it was definitely better. I could have searched. I could have sent a card to the graveyard, pop slant, summoned it, searched, it, and all that kind of stuff. All right, searching for my Makanko. Makanko grabbing the spell card, of course, putting the uh, green in graveyard. That way, of course, we can revive back from the grave. Keep in mind, we've used our normal summon, so we can't just normal summon this duel. Alright. Reviving, giving us our trap card. Searching for the trap. And from here, we actually just have lethal on field. We can hit him twice. He's down to 2,000 life points, being summoned a Lava Golem. Even without this second Lava Golem, he would have burnt for 1,000. Trap card, steal one, burn for another 1,000. For some reason, he decides to remain in the game despite having 2,000 life points and two Lava Golems on field. I... I don't know why. Alright, burning for 1,000. Burning for another thousand. Before doing so, I'll trigger the trap card, and my opponent concedes. You could have at least let me let me have the burn damage for lethal here, just for the replay. But all right, well we got him. All right, on to our next player. So I know there was at least one other Snake Eye replay in here, and I can't quite remember what the other ones were. Alright. So is this another Snake Eye player? There were a lot of Snake Eye players on ladder. Unsurprisingly. I think you need me to tell you that. Alright, he's grabbing his trap card, I believe, this one. Before going for... We're just gonna fast forward this one, otherwise we'll be here for another 70, 70 minutes. I think this guy went for the full Link climbing sort of stuff though, rather than the Synchro place. This guy has Promethean and Graveyard this time. Which is, again, a targeting effect, so it doesn't, we, we don't really care that much about it. Alright, there's the IP. Summoning back, summoning back, slowing out the Promethean, reviving again. Out comes an Amblo Whale at some point here. There it is. And okay, finally passing the turn. Alright, actually not that much disruption on this field. So I'm going to start with a Lava Golem. Basically, I just wanted to trigger his, um... Actually, I, didn't... I kind of forgot this thing would come back, I'm not going to lie. There wasn't really much else to Lava Golem there. And I kind of wanted to trigger monster effects so I can use my um, talents. So getting rid of his monster would have guaranteed he tried to revive stuff. I forgot this thing came back, though. That was a bit of a mistake, I think. Alright. Gonna see the weakest Kaiju Slumber here in a second, I believe. God, he actually triggered everything here. Even revives his own uh, IP. So using Slumber here does like literally nothing to this field, but I think we still use it anyway. Alright, Slumber. I think Masquerina being used in response to protect it from the slumber. He negates the slumber. I don't know if he really needs to do it. I guess he was going to lose his monster guaranteed, so he kind of had to. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to negate anyway. Maxi being used. Yeah, this deck doesn't care about Maxi. You can use it all you like. Alright. 
from here we now need to use our armory, sending a cart to graveyard to grab our water. Easiest way to get rid of IP. Oh, sorry, it's um, Appaloosa. Grabbing our trap in case we need it. Thrust giving us a search, grabbing the hidden armory. We're just going to grab a nice little sword here, I believe. The apps, if you're ever in doubt of how to kill someone with this deck list, just use your um, sword to search for your other sword and equip it. One Makanko is lethal. This is like the easiest lethal in the entire of the deck, entirety of the deck. So if you ever if you're ever in doubt, just try to look for a way to grab your sword and just pick your opponent. It's a very very simple lethal. Takes no brain power whatsoever. All right. So I think the actually I remember the last two replays. I think this one was against a runic, and the last one was against another snake guy. It's actually so satisfying to watch you break snake eye boards. It's so satisfying. Oh yeah, good old runic gameplay. And we've got a feather duster for his back right here, but he has got a way to stop the feather duster. So, how are we going to deal with this? Well, thankfully we have a way to negate this unit on the field. A nice look at Axe of Fools here. Axe of Fools equipment to his Hugin, activating the feather duster, and his field's gone. God, oh, look at that cringe shit, man. Goes and match. Oh god, the stupid thing that stops you summoning level six or something. Got to kill an attack or activate effects. Absolute cringe. And concede. All right. <laughs> I legit just saved that reflex. I found it very satisfying to watch uh watch stool decks get clapped. All right, final replay. Actually a very satisfying video. I've been clapping a bunch of absolute top tier meta decks and clapping a stun deck. God damn. So satisfying. Alright. This guy's name is uh, a bit rude towards a certain company there. Alright. Sinful. Sending. Activating max seat of course. Like I said that shit ain't ever resolving for some reason. Opponents always have the out. I do, love, I do love how my deck though doesn't need to play um, Cool Bly or Ash Blossom though because we don't care about Max C. It feels so good to be able to play a deck that doesn't care about those cards for a change. No cross out either. Can actually just play decent tech cards to out annoying shit. Alright, do I have to clear this field without Lava Golem though? God, this deck really does take 20 years to set up. 20 years to set up just so I can hit him with a fat kaiju. Alright, there's the IP. He's a... one of these. A pit knight. He's a heat soul. Dude, I don't, I don't know about making heat soul. Heat soul feels so like... I mean, I guess the deck plays a billion hand traps, but man... I'm, I don't know if I... I guess... I don't know if I chose to go second this game, but if he saw me choose to go second, he's taking damage to his own life points and potentially triggering, um... The, uh, whatever they're called, thrusts? I don't know. Alright. <laughs> Another thousand, Max C being used. Damn, wouldn't that be so tilting if I was playing any other deck seeing that? Full Snake Eye Field, and he's activating Max C. Alright, gonna use the Nadir Servant, hopefully before he draws into an Ash Blossom. Gonna pop a cart on the field, getting rid of the field spell. Maximus going to be summoning. I think he put a lot of uh, a lot of power in that field spell there. He was really hoping that wouldn't get destroyed. Summons a Promethean immediately. I'm now going to use Armory. Grabbing us, myself a nice little Fire Dance. Now the reason I need a Fire Dance here is because I need a target to send back to hand with the water. Considering if I kaiju something, he'd have nothing left on his field after I turn the Kaiju to hand. So, we're going to give him a target. Fat little Kaiju here. With the water, I should have um, to play around Nibiru. I shouldn't have actually have done this. I should have because that's one extra summon towards Nibiru. I should have just equipped it and returned it. I'm just used to doing this little combo here because you can use the Kaiju twice. But there's no real need to do that. I just played into Nibiru or potentially played into Nibiru. I'd say my hit green, tie my monster, and then <laughs> okay. So I, I was playing around Nibiru here, but what I was really trying to do is get a replay showing off the burn damage with the trap card. I completely forgot the trap card requires a ritual monster on the field for the burn damage, so I thought I had lethal here by passing the turn, 
I could have just summoned this Kaiju and just hit him there and he would have died. And if I played around Nibiru earlier, it wouldn't have been my fifth summon. Because that was five summons. I had one, two, two Kaijus, and I summoned back his Heat Soul. So it would have been five summons. So if I had done it properly, I could have killed him guaranteed here, even through a potential Nibiru. But I decided to play around Nibiru here just to uh, get the trap card effect off. And misplayed because, yeah, it wasn't actually lethal because I had no ritual monster on the field. If yeah, I had lethal here normally, I would just summon this Kaiju. Just, that's 3,000 damage if I just swing into it. Steal his monster thinking he was going to burn him. Didn't. I was like, oh shit. And he still conceded anyway. <laughs> Alright, that's going to do it for today's replays. Hope you guys enjoyed them. If you didn't, leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, pick up this deck. Let's go give it a try. It is a really fun deck. Just being able to ignore Max C and ignore certain fields, but just Lava golem your opponent feels really good. So highly encourage you to check out this deck. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, big brother, can I watch Spongebob? Shut up, Mokuba. I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.